Fortnite Chapter 2 came with a lot of changes, guys. Obviously, come on, we all know that. Loads of pros are really digging the fact that Epic Games has decided to throw back their entire loop pool to look closer to where we were in Season 4 or 5. But the problem here, and I mean right here, is that a lot of you guys got into Fortnite on a competitive level after these seasons were long gone. Worry no more, my friends, because in this video, we're going to be taking a deep dive into the ultimate Fortnite Chapter 2 loadout and get you guys comfortable with the current weapon rotation. What's going on, guys? This is the Motivation Guy, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Are you ready to break out this season? Because you're not going to break out if you don't believe it. You got to believe it first. If you believe in yourself, I'm telling you, you're going to do things that you've never done before, okay? So lift up your spirits. You're going to have a great year, a great season, um, not only in this game, but also in life. Connect with me as soon as you can on my Instagram. I want to post up videos to encourage you guys to be the best that you can be, that nothing can stop you if you just continue to just keep going forward, okay? I'm ready to roll. I'm ready to give you guys the do's and don'ts for what your inventory should consist of in Chapter 2, okay? But before we get into that, if you guys are interested in getting better at Fortnite, who wants to get better? Everybody should be nodding their head. Thank you. Then you should click the link below and go to ProGuys.com where you can play with the best players, guys, in the entire world by just clicking a button. Sign up for our membership at ProGuys and you're going to get a ton of incredible content from the best pro players like Benji and Mongrel. So if you want to compete in Fortnite, you got to check out ProGuys.com and be sure to drop a like in this video to show your support we strive to bring you guys the best available content with that being said it's time to sit back and relax and get my favorite candy you should already know what that is it's that bunch of crunch come on now let's get it going first and foremost we absolutely i mean positively got to talk about shotguns first yes sir this game and competitive loadout revolves around a solid shotgun to carry you through close quarter combat. I mean, for me personally, if I didn't have a shotgun in my inventory, I'd be a complete mess. <laughs> I'd be pulling all my hair out. Well, I don't really have a lot of hair, but if I did have hair, it'd be all out of my head. I'm telling you, seriously. It's hands down the most important weapon and we wouldn't be serving any justice if we didn't talk about shotguns first and then work our way down. You know, throughout the past few seasons, we saw a fast dilution of the shotgun loot pool with the introduction of the drum shotgun, the combat shotgun, and additional tactical shotguns. And as time went on, however, we saw Epic Games pull back and move to a two shotgun setup. I mean, come on guys, we all know that shotguns has been their play toy since the start of time. It's gotta be the most tweaked gun in all of Fortnite history, right? Regardless, Chapter 2 didn't see any additional shotguns vaulted. The opposite, actually. The pump shotgun now comes in all rarities, meaning the common, epic, and legendary variants are all a part of the loot pool now. The twist is they adjusted the damage for each rarity. The green and blue pumps, okay, which used to do 90 and 100 damage respectively, now do 80 and 90. The common pump is basically a peewee gun at this point <laughs> that only does 70 damage to the body. In line with this new damage scale, the epic and legendary pumps also got a slight nerf in contrast to when they were first introduced to the game. They do 100 and 110 damage, still pretty decent, all things considered, okay? While on the other hand, the alternative tax shotgun is basically untouched. All variants from common to legendary are still in the game, and as far as we know, the damage and headshot multipliers were left untouched. The fact that Epic didn't make any changes to the tax shotgun is actually an indirect buff because given the fact that its only competitor, the pump, just got weaker. I personally think that this is Epic pushing the philosophy that multiple playstyles could be successful, and they're doing it in a way that's just not so drastic. Buffs to the tack from a previous season combined with a small pump nerf this season, come on now, and I legitimately believe that the tack can become a viable strategy. If you see a gold tack versus a gray pump, or vice versa, the choice is pretty simple. But when you are met with a blue pump versus a blue tack or something very similar to that, your choice is going to be heavily reliant on your playstyle. Do you play strategically for a big shot or run and gun? And at the end of the day, you know your style more than I know your style, right? So hopefully me laying out this information allows you to decide which direction should you take. On a related note, I thought of addressing the crafting bench and how that might affect what shotgun you'd want to take. But in reality, you, one, can upgrade both shotguns if you wanted to, and two, you won't realistically be making epic and legendary upgrades that often due to how resource intensive they are. This sort of makes bringing up crafting benches pointless, but we did cover them more in depth in a previous video. Link, as always, is in the description down below. Since we've just about gone through everything you need to know about shotguns, it's time to address the shotgun's biggest sidekick. You already know who that is, ladies and gentlemen, none other than the submachine gun. 
SMGs are super OG to Fortnite and have almost always been the follow-up weapon to a big old shotgun shot. And it makes sense too. You land a big shot with your shotgun and you instantly want to give a short spurt of high damage to finish off your opponent, right? We were able to see how utilized the SMG really, really was when the tactical SMG was unvaulted for a short period in Season X. Like, hold the phone, everyone. What in the world? Somebody need to hold me back right now. Somebody hold me back. I got to fight to pick with the TAC SMG. Every single time I load into Zone Wars, some playground warrior who thinks they're all that would just throw hundreds of bullets my way. Just look how fast the gun melts people and you ask yourself, is this item fair for comp play? Hmm. With the fact that turbo build delay was increased to 0.15 seconds, removing this item was definitely the right play. So, to go full circle to my point, remember how I just said that SMGs have almost always been a part of your standard loadout? Yeah, well, there was a small period of time where SMGs had very little dominance. You might be thinking, like, when was that? Okay, well, this is back in the middling seasons where there were limited options when it came to types of SMGs. Think seasons 4 through 7, that kind of time. The reason why SMGs weren't as utilized during that period was because a standard AR or even the pre-nerfed AK-47 was not that much worse as a follow-up gun than a silence or regular SMG. Instead of a pump SMG lineup alongside an AR, it was very common to see pro players running the two-gun setup. The pump and the AR, everything else is reserved for utility and heals. This strategy has gone up and down in popularity over the seasons due to how effective the SMGs were as a follow-up weapon. And Chapter 2 is no different. Given the fact that there is now only one lineup of SMGs, which are the original common, uncommon, and rare submachine guns alongside the newly unvaulted epic and legendary compact SMG, it's difficult for me to see a future where pro players are consistently using the weapon. So expect to really only have two weapons in your loadout and have more room for everything else. Speaking about everything else, <laughs> what a coincidence. Healing items and utility have been drastically narrowed down as well. And when I say drastically narrowed, <laughs> that's lightly putting it, okay? To really get a solid understanding, let's talk about utility pull first and then work our way to healing afterwards. Okay, so utility, I gotta say Epic doesn't really leave us a lot to work with here. <laughs> they actually vaulted basically every utility item except grenades, which were left unchanged. Stink bombs? Nah, sorry. What about shield bubbles? Sorry, gone. How about shockwaves? Don't think so. All gone. The only thing that actually resembles utility is the RPG, which now spawn in all rarities from common to legendary. They do between 70 and 130 damage and are admittedly much more common than in the past. The point that I'm really trying to get to here, <laughs> what is your point? Good, good question. Is that you really won't have to worry about utility slots anymore because, well, there really isn't any. Kind of awkward. If I were you, I'd reserve one inventory slot maximum between either an RPG or grenades, depending on what RNG decides to give you. Even then, I can make an argument that Chapter 2 will be completely viable with no utility at all. That is, if Epic doesn't bring it all back in next week's patch notes. This means you're going to have more inventory slots dedicated to healing than ever before. The only problem is, my friends, uh, well, how do I put this? Epic decided to remove half of all the healing items as well. <laughs> we are really going to be bare bones with this one, you guys. No more chug splashes, slurps, or chug jugs. The only healing items are bandages, okay? Med kits, small pots, and big pots. They also added a new item in the game, kind of looks like a machine gun, but it only heals your teammates and yourself. It's called the Banished Bazooka. Now, the Banished Bazooka actually looks kind of sick. I'm not even gonna lie about this. It has unlimited uses and acts like a chug splash for white health only. 15 health per teammate in the splash zone with five charges every 20 seconds. Woo. The only downside is that it takes up two inventory slots, yeesh, which means it's not even viable for a solo game mode. But for like a squad game mode, well, this is perfect for that. Unlimited white healing for an entire squad? Two inventory slots seems quite generous. Regardless, you're much more restricted in terms of what healing items you can hold. I guess it's going to make your decision much easier if you want to have a positive attitude about it. You know, back in the earlier seasons when healing options were quite similar to this, many pots were king back then. Everyone was holding them, an absolute staple to the inventory. I'm quite sure, guys, that we're back to that loadout structure, you know, so make sure to start stacking them early and you need to start prioritizing them when deciding what healing items you should carry, okay? Even if you have to make a decision between big pots and small pots, I still side with small pots due to how fast you can get 50 health back. Harder to pop big pots in a desperate scenario, so choose wisely. Also, make sure to carry some white heals, guys, because some campfires are no longer in the game either. You can't double slurp juices or chug splashes as a replacement for white heals since they don't exist. 
So now you have to hold bandages or med kits in your loadout. Yes, I know. I know. You got to do it. This applies doubly for a team base game mode, <laughs> squads. So let's cover everything one more time and really put the picture together, okay? First off, the shotgun dynamic has shifted every season and chapter two is no different. Know that you're playing at a severe disadvantage with low tier pumps, okay? And switching it up by picking up a tack shotgun once in a while is a solid choice. Additionally, the submachine gun is not completely essential to your loadout, like previous seasons, you know? Using your AR as a follow-up spam weapon won't put you at much of a disadvantage compared to using this strategy in Season 10. Finally, make sure to utilize that extra inventory space on healing items. Minis are always going to be king with this limited loot pool, okay? But you will have to hold bandages or a med kit due to the fact that those are the only types of white healing in the game right now. The only exception is if you're playing squads, then you can carry the bandage bazooka. That's really what it comes down to every single season, you know, the meta, the loot pool changes, that's just how Epic rolls to keep the content fresh. My goal is to take the changes and let you know what your loadout needs to consist of to be at peak efficiency all the time. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Once again, this is The Motivation Guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Make sure to follow me on my Instagram. I'm posting up vids to inspire you to be the best that you can be, not only in this game, but also in life. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Why not leave a like to show some gratitude? We really appreciate all the support you guys show in the video. We've seen a lot of new subs recently, and we just want to say thank you. Hey, how you guys doing, by the way? If you haven't subbed yet, then I don't know what you're doing with your life because, you know, you got to do, you, you do it. All right, guys, we'll see you soon.